Price. And I'm Abby Bishop, and today is February 10th. And we are live from 701. Are you sure we're live? I've heard some people say WTU7 is actually pre-recorded. No way, that's just another myth here at Woodstock. Adam and Landon went around busting some other myths heard around the school. What's up Woodstock? It's your school's archaeologist Adam Zemecki from WTV7. For the past three weeks, I went around uncovering the myths of this high school, and here's what I found. There are many myths regarding the fact whether there is a pool on the school or not. If you look over here, this is an overview of the school. If you look closely, you can kind of see a pool around here. So what you got to do to get there, you go into the gym, take the elevator up, simple. Our next myth that I uncovered is our very own principal, Charles Ingram, secretly three goblins in a trench coat. I did some digging for this. Our next myth is Woodstock High School actually the 51st state? I went to Joe Biden himself and asked him, and you know what he said? Probably. So here's our new flag, 51 stars to represent Woodstock High School, still 13 stripes. This is going to be replaced very quickly in the school, as well as the rest of the United States. This has been your main archaeologist, Adam Zemecki, signing off. Now I know Woodstock is the 51st state. I don't know about that. Maybe we need to ask one of our history teachers. Uh, I think I'll pass on that, but we can definitely talk to Dr. Ingram about golf. Riley interviewed him and Coach Ogle about our golf program. Hi, I'm Derek Ingram. I'm the boys' golf coach. Nathan Ogle, I'm the girls' golf coach. And uh, I can tell you what the boys' team's looking forward to this season is just to have you know a good season, show up, um, do well in some tournaments, maybe win a tournament. Our ultimate goal, I think, like every program at the schools, to make it to the state and do well in the state tournament. What about you guys? Our goal this year, I'd say, is to qualify for state, be competitive at the county, and um, have a good showing at the area tournament. Why did I want to coach golf? That's an interesting question. Mm -hmm. I love golf. I love playing golf. Um, I'm not very good at it, but I know the basic parameters to help people understand and develop a lifelong love for the game. I agree with what he said. He's not very good at it. Um, I wanted to coach golf because, like Nate here, I enjoyed it. I grew up playing it. I'm not that good at it. I'm certainly not the best player on the team. I probably wouldn't even make the team this year. But I enjoy coaching it because it's a lifelong sport, and, uh, you know, it's just something I still enjoy doing. My favorite thing about being a golf coach is kind of seeing the players develop. I remember playing high school golf and um, growing a lot. Golf teaches you a lot of life lessons. So while I'm probably not good enough to teach these guys how to you know, properly swing and all the things and mechanical, I can t teach some life lessons that you learn on the course that you can kind of have for the rest of your life. My favorite thing about coaching golf is seeing the development and the camaraderie with the players and watching players like Riley Depp go from freshman to seniors and just seeing the smile on their face. What's my favorite golf club? Well, that's an easy answer. I like the big stick, the big dog, the driver. Uh, I can't hit many other things very consistently, but I can definitely hit my driver well. While I too enjoy the driver because, you know, you know, I'm logged off the tee, I kind of like the eight iron, right? I like with the 150 in, I feel solid with an eight iron. So I say eight iron for me. I mean, so to wrap it up, I just want to say, you know, thanks for the opportunity to talk to you guys during Homeroom. Um, you know, we're excited uh, to get featured on this great program, WTV7. It's a well-oiled machine. Um, you know, we're excited for this season this year. And, um, you know, just thanks for the opportunity to, to speak to you guys. Go Woodstock. Good luck to our golf team this season. I'm so happy your spring sports are getting started. Spring is one of my favorite seasons. Well, I've got a bit of an unpopular opinion. My favorite season is winter. Woodstock knows all about this. Peyton and Haley asked our school unpopular opinions. Hey guys, it's Haley and Peyton with WTV7. And today we went around and asked you your unpopular opinions. What is your unpopular opinion? Mm. Baseball isn't entertaining to watch. What's your unpopular opinion? Well, the Woodstock lacrosse team is the best team of Woodstock High School. Girls across team, right? The girls across yeah, team. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what is your unpopular opinion? Pineapple on pizza is a sin. Sue me. Okay. Fruity pebbles are the best area in the world. Sweet tea is gross. Donuts are gross. Cheese is gross. What else is gross? Personally, Taylor Swift and Harry Styles are not all that. The NFL sucks. Okay. Sushi. Sushi's gross. My unpopular opinion is that white prom dresses are cute. Coffee, I don't like caramel. Sprite's kind of gross. What is your unpopular opinion? 
The dress was white and gold. It's blue and black. Yes, it is. Some of those answers are pretty whack. I'm Peyton Robson. And I'm Haley Biles. Back, Back to the Anchors. I'm Alden, and those were some interesting opinions. My unpopular opinion is The Weeknd is overrated. Connor made a video of his top 10 artists and his music suggestions. Top 10s. Everybody loves a top 10 list, especially me. And today, I got my own top 10 list of my most favorite music artists at this current moment of time. Let's get into it. All right, at my number 10 spot, we got ASAP Bro. He's pretty good. He got some interesting music, but I like it, so that's it. I'm a number nine. It may be a little weird, but I got Ariana Grande. Listen, her vocals, her music, her production, everything. It's all amazing about her. You should check out R.E.M. and Off the Table. At number eight, we got Kendrick Lamar. He already is a certified legend in the music industry, and that's a fact. You gotta check out You and Pride. All right, at my number seven, we got Denzel Curry. Surprisingly, he not mainstream, but he's a very talented artist, and trust me, you gotta listen to him. Favorites gotta be Taboo, Speedboat, and Walkin'. At my number six, we got King Vamp himself, Playboy Cardi. His voice is unique, his production is unique, and everyone's trying to be him, so you know, he's just like him. My favorite's gotta be Over and Foreign. And at number five, we got Young Thug. Young Thug, ooh, he's a very talented artist. He got some of my favorite songs of all time. He, he's like, He's him also, like, what can I say? Gotta check out Relationship and Live It Up, which also features Rocky. At number four, we have personally one of my very favorites, SZA. With her new album, SOS, releasing last month, she already got, like, she, she got so many hits now. Y'all gotta check out Open Arms, Drew Barrymore, and Shattered Ring. And at my number three spot, we got Travis Scott, probably one of the best performers of all time. His voice is so angelic, and any song you listen to of his, it makes you want to flow, man. My favorite's got to be 90210, Skeletons, and Overdue. All right, coming in at second, we got Future. If you listen to his music, it makes you think like you're the main character. Like, he, he, he could be like a legend in the game, pretty much. You got to listen to Solo and One of Mine. And at my number one spot, the GOAT of music, The Weeknd. Listen to any song by him and you'll understand where I'm coming from. He's, well, like I said, just the GOAT of music. Gotta check out Out of Time, Nothing Compares, and The Morning. All right, and that is my top 10. I know a pretty solid list if you ask me, but thank you for watching my top 10, and I'll be back with more top 10 things. This is Connor Conkle, signing off. Speaking of the weekend, I am so happy it's Friday. Tomorrow, I'll be at our Winter Guard competition over at River Ridge. I'm excited because it's getting closer to one of my favorite holidays, Valentine's Day. Deasia went around and asked you guys what your Valentine's Day plans are. Good morning, Woodstock. With Valentine's Day coming up, I went around the school to see what you guys are doing for Valentine's Day. What are you doing for Valentine's Day? I'm going to dinner with my boyfriend and we're making things at my house. I'm go probably going to do something with my family or do something with my Valentine if he steps up and does something. <laughs> a call to action. Um, give me something good for love. What are you doing for Valentine's Day? Uh, nothing. <laughs> Spending time with my chickens. What are you doing for Valentine's Day? I'm going to take my partner out down to downtown Woodstock. I'm going to hit him with that riz, that unspoken riz. Absolutely. What's your riz look like? Let me let me get it ready for you. Whew. Oh my. Heart skipped a beat. I have work. Hooray! Hooray! <laughs> what are you doing for Valentine's Day? Uh, not gonna lie, I don't have no Valentine's, so I'm probably just hanging out with friends for doing the same old, same old angle. I'm making a homemade dinner for my ex. For your ex? Yes. Oh, okay. What are you doing for Valentine's Day? Um, I was actually gonna ask you to be my Valentine. Really? No. Those were some great answers. I hope everyone has a great Valentine's Day. Back to the anchors.
I hope you guys get some impressive gifts for Valentine's Day. You know what else is going to be impressive is the talent at Woodstock. Today we have a talent show in the auditorium during seventh period. Break a leg to all those who are performing. And good luck to our soccer teams tonight against South Cobb. Girls play at 6 and boys play at 7.30. Well, that's all we have for you this week. I'm Abby Scorus. And I'm Abby Bishop. Make, Make it a great day, Woodstock. Woodstock.